I think I started late there, didn't I? Oh, well, welcome, welcome. Uh, this is some wild roots. I'll talk about those in a bit. Oh, it's a beautiful morning. This week, it's sunny, so it's not dark like it was last week on the live video. Uh, I looked back at it and it was a little darker than I realized. I picked some wild potatoes. Or let's see, do they call them wild potatoes? Yeah. Anyway, hey, you're on here. Um, so, yep, if anybody can't hear me, I'm assuming the audio is good. But after we did that video with uh, outdoor uh, outfitters, daggone it, I'm so bad with names. Anyway, after we did that live video the other day, I'm nervous about the sound quality because it wasn't so great that morning. Let's see, Jennifer Harden's updating me. Rory and Jennifer, we want to pop in. Oh, cool. Hope all is well again. Looking forward to watching it. Thanks, Je Jennifer and Royce. Hope you guys have a great day. They got some good family stuff going on. Hey, Justin. Welcome. And Jared, 5x5. Five five. Uh, are we talking about deer antlers? 5x5. Uh, five five. Or rifle scopes. No, nothing's 5x5, five five, I don't believe. I don't know much about scopes. All right, well, a few more people t looking. I just thought uh, this morning we'd talk about some simplification of life, and uh, I had a victory in my diet as far as that goes. Oh my gosh, all right. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, Justin just informed me. The um... <laughs> Oh, cool. All right, Justin just informed me that the sound didn't kick on for a while. Um, so I'm a little nervous about that. Maybe y'all missed what I was saying. I got some wild roots that I dug. I want. We're going to talk about diet. Um, I had a victory as far as my diet goes. I was able to kick some stuff that I'm uh, got a bad habit of eating. Um, and what I mean by that is my body is uh, uh, addicted to it. And um, and how to kick that. So. Um, that's what we're going to get into. I just about got some water boiling. Speaking of being addicted to things. And I got some coffee here. And uh, we're going to kick into this. So, already getting a bunch of comments. So, let's uh, let's con notice those. Dallas, hello from Connecticut. Listening to Jimmy Driftwood. I do not know Jimmy Driftwood, but I assume he must be a good country singer of some sort. Welcome, Connecticut. And Steve Borg Resistance. Thanks, man. Um, wait, yeah, thank you for letting me know. Okay, all right. So if you got comments, questions, put them there and I'll get to them. I'll take breaks and get to them. Meanwhile, I'm, uh, I'm listening to, I'm cooking some meat on the stove. So I hear that boy and I think it's my coffee. So simplifying the diet has been an ongoing process. Uh, when I moved out, this way food obviously was a main thing and in my shed it was uh i think it was it was 10 or 12 feet wide and i had a whole uh, row of shelves and kitchen stuff and it was just full of food and it stressed me out all the time thinking man i don't want to have all this 50 different items that i gotta buy when i go to town and because i was constantly running out of stuff and so you got to go to town to replenish and it was really hard to get stocked up ahead. So my route of handling that was to just keep start cutting out as many foods as I could. And uh, little by little, I cut it down uh, to the most recent where I quit making bread. Bread, my bread that I've made videos on was what I ate for breakfast and then uh, for dinner and lunch I'd eat bread again <laughs> and then uh, some kind of meat. But then I decided, you know what, what if I just cut out the bread and I just ate meat and rice. And so I also at that time cut down to uh, two meals a day. So I eat around eight or nine in the morning and then I eat around one or two in the afternoon. That frees me up for dinner time. Oh, it's so great to get to like 6 p.m. And when I normally think, okay, now I have to stop what I'm doing and cook and eat. Instead, I'm... I notice, hey, I'm not even hungry, and now I don't have to interrupt what I 
enjoy doing because this time of year right before sunset is my favorite time to be outside it's uh, usually by then for some reason the wind has calmed so it's just still and it's warm and still light out and it's just great so it's nice to not have to come inside and have to cook uh, so that's how I've simplified things and uh, even then I even made a video where I talked about I even cut out the sauce because now what I eat is meat and rice well I'll get to the rice I eat meat and or meat and rice in the morning and then I would make my own sauce out of it I'd add uh, olive oil soy sauce barbecue sauce black pepper and salt and it's really good uh, when you get the levels right and then I decide well heck I'll just cut that out because I like the taste of meat and rice and just use salt and pepper because that would cut down a whole lot more than I would need to buy but then after a while sometimes the meat didn't taste that great or it was kind of bland or if it got too dry and so I have some Worcester sauce I thought I'm gonna see what this is so I put some of that on Worcester sauce is amazing so now I'm back to doing a little bit of that, a little bit of Worcestershire sauce and uh, barbecue sauce, and uh, but trying to avoid buying olive oil because it's expensive, and I now have a source of pork fat that I can render down, and that's really good. Ah, uh, now the coffee water's boiling. So that's where my diet's at, but then I still had this problem with going to town where... When I go to town, I like to buy a few things, like uh, uh, like ice cream uh, uh, of some sort, and donuts, particularly maple bars, and uh, let's see, what's the other one that I really fall for? Well, when I make a mistake, I buy the ginger snaps at the dollar store. $1.25 for these incredible cheap bag of ginger snaps that I cannot stop eating. Oh, and Doritos. Love Doritos. But I none of that's healthy. I don't like eating it, but um, <clears throat> I would really crave it. But after a while, so what I've figured out, what I believe I've figured out, the hack to getting yourself off of that is uh, I think we all tend to want to go cold turkey. You know, I think that's typical. And that's not necessarily the best because what happens is our biomes, getting all technical now, our gut biomes, they develop and get used to the food that we give it. That's why we crave things. And um, even healthy things. So. Uh, I had a friend that we were friends with some vegans and we were going over there for dinner my buddy and I and I am not vegan never been and I don't eat a lot of vegetables if I can help it although I do like a good stir fry I know how to do that with plenty of meat in it and so we went over there because we're eating dinner I wanted to show up hungry and we showed up and I was getting really hungry I get low blood sugar and then I start to get shaky. And of course, you know, you show up and they're not ready to eat right away. That's weird. You just show up, sit down. Uh, anyway, in my experience. And so finally, we get to eat. And they put this, some kind of vegetable compilation in front of me. And I eat it down. And I'm even more hungry at that point than before I ate it. And that was really strange to me. Uh, and meanwhile, my buddy, he, was, he eats vegetables all the time. And to him, it was great. And so I think I went inside, if I remember right, and asked him, do you have any kind of bread? Because they're also wheat-free. So, man, that was miserable. I think I ended up leaving and going to get something to eat. Because I just, I was, not to be, because I was rude, but I was shaking. My blood sugar was so low. Uh, and my head was getting light. Uh, anyway, it's perfectly healthy food. That's the point. But because I ate so little of it, my body didn't, uh, it wasn't what my body needed. 
that's my understanding of how it all works. And um, so that's how I was able to kick my junk food is that I used to go to town every few days. And when I go to town, I'd buy some kind of food to enjoy. But then because I'd stay out of out here for a week or two weeks without even going to town and eating more and more healthy here my body got more used to it I think my understanding my biome got more used to it so that then when I went to town there was a time like I really noticed it where I thought about Doritos and I was like I don't even want them not to mention not wanting to spend six dollars on them as the prices have skyrocketed but I also didn't even I didn't really crave it not like I used to and um, and so I talked to a buddy about that who's really into health and he he was the one who um, I think he's the one that told me about the gut biome and uh, and so the thing is that uh, with addictions I posted about addictions in nature that um, we don't you don't have to go cold turkey I don't think it's just start weaning yourself off because what you're doing is you're altering your body and uh, you're altering your body and what it craves as I <laughs> use my last addiction here um, so anyway that has helped me for simplifying. It's a really good victory. As far as maple bars, I still buy maple bars, but the last one from the other day. What I hate about modern food is how they throw stuff in to overwhelm your senses. So it's not about quality food. I, I love the taste of meat and whole wheat flour and stuff like that. So if I add flavoring, it's just a supplement. It's not because I don't like it. Anyway, to me, modern food is more about punching you with some kind of flavor. And most of it's not even sugar anymore, but like corn syrup and sweetener. And uh, so I was eating this maple bar. They're good quality maple bars. Like it's a good donut shop. They're the only ones I've, well, they're my favorite ones to buy from. But as I was eating it, I was like, man, this maple, it's more sugar than maple like i don't know if any of you remember i don't have it on me didn't know i was going to mention it i've got these little maple pucks they're pure maple that have been dehydrated into kind of like a candy and they're kind of hard to bite off a chunk and they're so flavorful they're just pure maple my buddy sent them back shout out to chris uh from back east in pennsylvania and they're incredible. Uh, the maple flavor is just so strong. I bite off the first time I, I ate it. I took just a little nibble because I wasn't sure if I was allergic to it. And I was like scared to take a very big chunk. Now I'm a little more used to them. So I take a little bit bigger bites. But even still, it's like um, the size of a Skittle, maybe. Or smaller that, I, uh, that I'll eat. And then I, uh, I don't drink uh, eat it again for a while because that's the natural flavor. And so I like the flavor of maple. And when I get these maple bars, first off, they have about twice as much maple across the top than I would even want. I always think I need to scrape it off, but instead of messing with that, I just eat it. But anyway, my point is, last time I ate it, I was like, oh, this is just sweet. It's not even hardly a maple flavor. The bread is good. The way they do the bread is really good but the maple is just sweet and um, so that's the kind of things that you're looking for is when your body doesn't want it anymore and when your flavor and your taste buds and your mind is like I don't I don't even care for this and if you pay attention to that then you can start kicking things because otherwise what we do we just develop a habit like I have a habit now of stopping at these there's two locations that sell those donuts that I go to. So if I'm in one town, it's a small town right by my main town, I'll just stop in and grab one. Or if I'm in the other town, if I'm near enough, nearby, then I'll, uh, then I'll buy one there. 
and uh, so it kind of becomes a habit. Oh, that's just what I do now. So if you pay attention to your body and listen to it and don't just fall into the habit, then you can kick stuff. And uh, anyway, I hope that helps others. I'm really happy because I don't like, I grew up, I grew up in a, with a lot of depriving and I'm not, so I'm not into that where I don't know if it was religious or just my parents, but where it's like, no, you just can't have it. No explanation, no good reason. Just, no, you just can't have all that stuff that you want. Like I say, I'm grateful for it now, but as a kid, it's tough. But anyway, and so I don't think that that's, in my opinion, it's not necessarily the way that we do. Just outright kick it. Like, no, you can have whatever you want. And that's the key. Watch your body because you may not want it. So if you can get rid of the want, then it's not something that you have to fight. Later on, I'll think of better words for this, but I think I'm making the point. You hear my rooster? I love that rooster. I'm so glad he's back. Um, so that's, uh, that's a thing about kicking food. So there's a lot of people who like talking about simplifying, so that is a way to just kind of let your body work with your body to simplify your diet. And um, it might take a little while, but a lot of people aren't ready to just jump into, bam, all of a sudden I have a simple life. You just gotta kind of work through it little by little. Um, another thing I was gonna talk about was vitamins. So now I'm no expert, I'm just passing on what I've learned from an expert. I have a friend from childhood who's a doctor now, and a great guy. He's actually extremely um, rational to talk to, like, uh, and so really appreciate the info that he puts, the input that I get from him, because vitamins have been a, a big one for me. So we grew up eating, taking vitamins. My mom would give us five or six vitamins every morning. And uh, so vitamins to me are just part of my life. Supplements, and uh, or like when we get sick, the the go-to is popping vitamin C every hour. And um, I never stayed sick very long. You know, a couple of times, but those are exceptions. And um, so then later on in life, start hearing, oh, don't take supplements; they're pointless. I thought, wait a minute, I'm not just going to buy that up right away. And this one gal, I don't know if she was a doctor or if she was training to be a doctor. But she said, uh, she said, yeah, you don't, don't take vitamins, you just pee them out anyway, so they're pointless. And I said, well, yeah, but you get a little bit of them, right? She says, well, yeah, a little bit. And I said, yeah, so if you take them repeatedly, then the little bit, little bit, little bit builds up, right? I mean, I was asking her, it makes sense to me. Well, she gave me this look down her nose, like, how would you dare to uh, question a doctor? Like, she gave me no response. She just stared at me, glared at me. <laughs> and uh, her fiance at the time and I were pretty good friends. And now, years later, he has the same attitude. So not a lot of discussion with them, but she didn't answer my question. And it still made sense. And by the way, fast forward, I was right. And I'll get to that. Um, but not all the time. So I found out also vitamins can kill you. So don't, don't, in case anybody cuts off here and says, oh, okay, vitamins, tons of vitamins are safe. They can also kill you. So, um, but anyway, that question still remained like, well, how is it that supplements don't work? I just don't believe this. Because also, my eye doctor prescribed me supplements. He gave, he told me, because uh, I wanted, I asked him about macular degeneration, which is another thing that y'all should look out for. Everybody gets macular degeneration, it's just whether, how bad it gets before you die. And uh, so I have a history of it in my family, so I asked him about it, and he prescribed me with these supplements. So if supplements don't work, why is my doctor giving them to me 
testing my levels and finding that after I took them for a month and two months, my levels increased and now he can reduce me to one supplement a day rather than two. I mean, right? Anybody tracking with me? That makes sense. If, su if supplements don't go into our bodies, then why do doctors give them to us? And I'll get to that. And so, but remember, they can kill you. So uh, don't just start taking vitamins. And uh, <clears throat> so I finally figured this out. I'll jump ahead. This story's getting too long. So I finally figured out from my doctor friend. I asked him. I, kind of, I confronted him. Hey, what, I mean, how, why do you say don't take supplements? Because he also said it. And I said, well, yeah, but what about this and this and this? So it turns out there's some vitamins that store up in our fat, and then there's some that we pee out. Fortunately, vitamin C, we pee out because that's the one I took for my sickness and otherwise I might have died. Things like vitamin D, A, and K, if I remember right. This is why you shouldn't eat too much liver also because liver is, has a lot of vitamin A. If you eat too much of that, what your body does is it stores it in your body. And once you get too much, it can hurt you. And um, there is a story, I'm sure there's more, of a gal who died from overdose of vitamin D. And so, uh, so I think the long story short is supplements give a little bit of benefit to your body. Doctors know how much. And so if they tell you to take them, then obviously, well, not so obviously these days, but then you should have a good doctor and uh, you're in good shape. But supplements also don't give a lot of benefit and that if you're eating a healthy diet, according to my doctor, friend, my doctor friend, if you're eating a healthy diet, that usually you get enough from that. And uh, get outside to get vitamin D, nothing healthier than being outside and being active anyway. That's the best thing for stroke and heart disease and all kinds of things. And so anyway, that's just the summary of what I've learned about vitamins lately, what I've put together. So. I'm not trying to tell anybody how to live. I'm just trying to kind of like, like a journalist, take this information I've received and pass it on as I understand it. Uh, so uh, I just thought that's interesting. Uh, should help people. Also, vitamins are expensive. So if you're simplifying and cutting down your diet, then uh, it doesn't hurt to know that you can eat healthy and save money by not buying supplements. I just had to shut down my fireplace. It's getting warm in here. Huh. So, body cravings and supplements. And I'm gonna try to, so look at this. Speaking of being outside, that's a root. Hardly seems like it's worth going after, right? Well, that's been my main problem with foraging, is that the food is so small, it's hardly worth the energy. And meat is really a lot more uh, food for the um, effort. But then I thought, you know what? I'm in the shade over here digging these. What happens if I go over there where they get more sunshine? Because it's still early in the year, there's not a lot of sunshine, so that might make the difference. The ones that actually get some. And it did. Look at this. Whoops. There's a couple that I got. Yeah, I guess you can see that. Compared to this little guy. I wish I could get them all like this one. That one's just a monster. Uh, relatively. I mean, I got a bag of potatoes over there. You really get to see the contrast in Western civilization farming versus natural. However... Um, I suspect, and then these are a little bit kind of medium sized, but those, I feel like I can dig these, peel them, and, and then boil them, and it's worth the effort. I mean, I'll throw these in too, obviously. But, uh, <clears throat> but speaking about being outside and being active, what's better than uh, being active, getting sunshine, and harvesting your own food for free that you didn't have to grow? Because that's the other thing. So you get more out of a potato. I might as well grab one. You 
you get more out of a potato than well, I'm gonna grab an average sized one because I don't know I don't know if the big one is the norm but let's say all of these I'll just take them all oh, shoot I'll take them all that still doesn't equal one potato but the better you get at digging these um, the faster it goes also what does it take to grow a potato if you do it yourself uh, you got to prepare the land you got to plant them I haven't done the potatoes yet I've only looked into it a little bit but it takes a ton of work preparing the land keeping animals off of it uh, keeping moles out from eating them I think and uh, and then finally you get to harvest versus this you just go out and dig and I suspect I'm trying to figure out if the green is an indication of the size of the root but also I think the soil is an indication because I have we have places around here that are soft soil where you can dig without hitting rocks and then we have places where you can't dig because there's so many rocks and I have found that those tend to have smaller roots so I suspect if you were a uh, Yakima Indian who was doing this all the time you'd figure out how to spot the ones that are more further along and the better places to uh, dig them and get more like this rather than like this like I started out doing so then you got to ask uh, you know is it better this also not to mention the pesticides that you need to keep bugs down and because you're doing a monocrop you're more subject to um, to bugs and if you have a bad season then you might get less of a crop where these you just go to a different part granted there's probably not enough of this to uh, feed everybody but maybe we could figure out a way to um, do a little of both or something or make this a little bit more natural anyway that's uh, that's something interesting these I gotta boil these like three times because they do have this weird thing it's called a clack where you eat it and you kind of feel it in your mouth if you just uh, boil it once and that's why I think uh, the Yakima's did pit ovens for their roots before um, before they got the technology of metal pots and pans very common for the roots was pit ovens I know that people uh, can also boil in like a stomach you toss hot rocks in, get the water boiling but because these have that clack I think is why um, boil them for you cook them in a pit for 24 hours a steam pit and they come out I believe is the way I don't I haven't looked into it a whole lot but anyway uh, that's uh, most of what I had for food today and um, let's check out some comments now my coffee water just got done on my wood stove bread is good to quit yeah so is rice oh yeah I didn't get back into rice so whole wheat does have some benefits um, I mean obviously too much of anything is probably bad even too much of um, vegetables because a lot of them have high oxalate levels but then I think it also depends on your own body and uh, you know it's crazy is a lot of this stuff can be tested but we don't do that and that's a whole nother rant that I have anyway um, safety safe levels of a lot of our organs and our uh, they have tests for it so why they're not running us through those tests like every quarter or at least every year I don't understand but um, anyway yeah bread is a good one to not have too much besides that I was reading the uh, epic of Gilgamesh and bread represents um, civilization which is also adds uh, uh, like this wild man got tamed by a harlot and she offered him bread and beer which represents like civilizations she civilized him and his legs were weak <laughs> which also I just watched Rocky last night and uh, and Mickey told Rocky don't uh, you know fool around before the fight because it makes your legs weak so that was kind of cool um, 
anyway, that's civilization. And, uh, and then the fur trade era, the um, fur trappers and traders that went out and became wild men out in the frontier, they uh, scoffed at people who ate a uh, different diet from them. Actually, they scoffed at people for eating pork, but they also didn't have a lot of bread. I mean, they had some, but, you know, uh, they were meat eaters. That's the point. They were non-civilized meat eaters. Bring your own beef jerky. Yeah. Excellent work. I'm going to assume that was for me. Dead Wolf Resistance 13. Uh, what is the name of the plant with the roots you have harvested? Oh, yeah. This is uh, Lomatium. I don't know. I think it's... Um, Pretty sure this is Lomatium canbii. It's harder to detect this part of the year where it's grown up tall. But Lomatium canbii, I don't remember the Yakima word for them, but that's our uh, Latin name for them, Lomatium canbii. They call it a bread root, bread root because it's easy to dig. It, it grows pretty close to the surface and, um, and it fills your starch desires. It's a common uh, root. I think that's why. Welcome, Snake Boot. Sorry you're late. 8.31. I don't see my clock here, so I don't know how, how long you've been on there. The dog ensured I didn't sleep in. <laughs> yeah, my dog was waking me up the other night. That was annoying. She walks around in here because she can't get through the door, I guess. She thinks she can't, so her, her fingernails are too long, and they make a loud noise on the wood floor. She just wanders around. Uh, so you've pared your diet down to only meat and rice and eliminated the sauce now. Oh, sorry, no. I recently brought the the sauce back in. I think I did mention that, but maybe I didn't make it very clear. So now, um, I've also done a little bit of bread lately. I brought a little bit of that back in because the rice, I was talking with this guy when I was in Austin, Asian guy actually, and he was telling me why rice isn't good. Uh, he says that... Um, white rice it's just a, um it's basically just a sugar that stores it right into the liver uh, so even though i'm thin that can be misleading if our organs or our liver are um, building up fat i don't know i forgot i looked it up myself to see if what he was saying had some other verification and it does seem to be true. There's some benefits to eating rice, white rice, but um, it helps. But I am cutting it down big time. Trying to just eat mostly meat, uh, add in some liver and heart on occasion, and, uh, and then I'd like to start digging some roots because this would... But I'm going to eat them little by little to start kind of getting my stomach used to them. And because uh, I want to round out my diet so I'm getting the vitamins. But you can get a lot of vitamins just from meat and liver. But I don't get the liver king. I never watched him. But from my understanding, like he was just eating liver. And that's dangerous and dumb. Uh, also, you feel, I feel like crap if I eat too much liver. I forgot about that once. I forgot that you don't eat too much when I was in Texas. And I ate a whole dinner out of it and I felt like crap. And then I remembered, oh yes, I'm supposed to just eat little bits. Either very little bit a day or every few days eat some. So, I mean, don't take my advice on how much to eat. Yeah, um, Ukraine. I don't like the sauce, by the way. Sorry, going to go on more about that. Because even the sauce, like Worcester sauce, it has, I think, like the first or second ingredient is um, corn syrup and then sugar. Same with barbecue sauce. So I am looking forward to making my own. I get a bunch of tomatoes and stew them. And then um, there's actually some really strong seasonings out here that I want to start using more. I've saved them in the past. I haven't really added them into a continual diet so that I can just start seasoning without all the sugar. That's really annoying. So, uh, all right, let's see. 
Snake boot, you've been sick. That sucks. Oops, and if they're, yeah. That's the other time my dog moves around when she wants me to feed her. Yeah, that's tough. Well, I hope you guys get better. Uh, take some vitamin C. Haha. Uh -huh. Um. That was a meat drying. Um. Uh, it's been okay. I got a bunch of liver here. The liver is funny. I'll show you. I can't even pick it up. I can't pick it up. So I got this rack. Great for drying things. Normally. But liver, I found out. I had never really dried it before. When it dries, it crumbles. Like an old parchment. You know, you're an archaeologist. Find a parchment. You got to be careful when it air gets to it. Because it will crumble. <clears throat> so... This stuff just crumbles, so I had to put some, um, I've got some screen, a roll of screen. So I had to put that under it so that it would hold it because this rack is, normally it would be a great size gaps, air gaps, but for the liver it just crumbles into dust. Not quite dust. Uh, but anyway, it, it's fine because it crumbles easily. I don't have to pound on it to use it, so that's kind of sweet. So I can just crumble it up and uh, throw it in my food. And um, I've got a ton of liver, so uh, I need to put it in a bag. I want to keep it separate from my other meat so that I don't overuse it. And uh, so that's why it's still sitting there. And I got more liver. I got more liver coming on April 15th. I got four beef livers. So I'm going to slice and dry those, and I'm going to have a ton of liver. Uh, so I'm excited about that. And then, uh, that's like my vitamin supplements. Meat drying hasn't been good. Um, as far as the meat, I got some beef out there. I took off for Oregon right when it started warming up. So my meat sat here wet. And then I got stuck in Oregon, if you guys remember that. My truck got stuck. So I ended up staying there for like two weeks instead of four days, which was what I initially planned. Like if I had just gone for four days, probably would have been fine. I would have got here, it would have dried it out. The exterior, not dried the whole thing, just the exterior. But instead it sat for like two weeks. And then, um, so I've been eating it for a while, but now I think all of it stinks and my dogs wouldn't eat it. I was still eating it, but now I'm nervous too. So that's frustrating. Um, I need to get more meat and then now it's the time of year where I got to dry it all. I can't leave it sitting out. So that, that kind of sucks. All right, more comments. Let's see. Oh, snake boot. Yeah. Thanks for asking Darius. Dallas Farrell. He asked about drying it, how the meat drying was going. Part of the reason to rinse your rice. Lots of starch. Oh, I didn't know about rinsing rice. Okay. Uh, snake boot says rinse the rice. Um, I heard about some kind of ancestral diet where you focus on the types of food you're specific. Oh yeah, I've heard about that too. But I don't, I don't know that I believe that. I mean, that came from holistic people. But I mean, I don't know. I mean, the way that I've got this great video where this guy uh, talks about how our gut biomes work. It's like two and a half hours long. And um, you can actually change your gut biome. So, and, oh, and he even talked about twins, how one twin and the other twin will have completely different gut biomes or like 95% different. And so I don't see, and I could be wrong, this is just my rationale. I don't see how um, a thousand years ago, your ancestors ate a certain diet how that would apply to how your gut biome is now. Um, and I don't see the benefit of changing it to that. I mean, that's just the stuff I'd have to answer for me to be convinced. Um, I feel like re listening to your own body and checking out what kind of energy you get, um, to me, that seems like the best. But I'm just speculating here. I'm no expert on this stuff. <clears throat> Um, virus might 
people of Irish descent, Irish, damn it, descent might process root vegetables to lamb and fish better. Not sure if there's merit to it, but it was an interesting concept. Yeah. I mean, I think if they're seeing benefit from that, I think it's more about just eating healthy foods because all of our ancestors ate more natural foods prior to the 1800s before canned food was a thing and lead lined um, cans. So yeah, if I had fish, I'd have to sun dry it. Or if I got into pickling, which I don't plan to do because I'd have to make vinegar in mass. No, I don't smoke my meat, knees bushcraft. Guys, check out Knees Bushcraft, by the way. He's a cool guy, does cool stuff. Uh, I don't smoke meat because I talked earlier about, I mentioned my eye doctor. One of the primary, one of the worst things you can do, if not the worst, I think it was the worst um, uh, thing that you can do to make your macular degeneration come on quicker is to smoke. And so I've never really smoked. I've smoked a cigar and pipe off and on, but um, that's the worst thing you can do. And so, because I don't know what it is about the smoking, but I also assumed that because in ancient times, a lot of old cultures, people would go blind early in life. I figured it's because of the smoke in their teepees or in their shelters. A lot of cultures, they didn't realize how bad smoke was. That's why if you look at a lot of ancient home designs, they don't have great ventilation like we do. Like, and, um, anyway, and I experienced that in South Africa where they literally brought a fire inside in a big metal dish and it was not designed to get rid of smoke. It was just a square house, like a normal European house. And the place just filled with smoke, but they didn't know that that was wrong. They just wanted it to be warm in there and they're tough. And uh, that's how I was when I was young. I would just sit in the smoke instead of trying to get out of it. Um, I would just tough it out because I my answer to everything was just be tough. And um, and then my eyesight started going bad. So I don't know if the two are connected. I don't think they are. But uh, anyway, it happened. Uh, so that's why I don't smoke meat because I don't want all the carcinogens because you get a lot of carcinogens from eating smoked meat. And, um, and unless, un unless I find out otherwise, I'd rather avoid it. So yeah, I just air dry. But the problem is pretty soon flies are gonna be laying eggs. Uh, they already are. So now drying, drying will have to be done inside but it's still not quite dry enough, uh, warm enough outside anyway. Um, Snake Boot says, I think that's the biggest thing, eating whole foods and less processed crap. That's been our focus the last year. Yeah, yep. And I don't know if y'all be like me, but man, I can't eat. I'm surprised I can eat Doritos. I think it's because I ate them regularly and my body is used to them, but I can't eat most foods. I get a can of, um, Anything that's got, you know, that long list of um, of uh, ingredients, or even strawberries, the type that are grown in California or Mexico, are garbage. They don't even hardly taste good when you've had a real strawberry. I used to grow strawberries in my yard, and the little strawberry was full of flavor, versus what I call the apples that you get out of California. Great big strawberries, but hardly any taste. I ate some of those and it made me sick a couple weeks ago. They're like three bucks for a pound. So, yeah, I can't personally eat most foods. So, um, it, it just makes me sick. So, anyway, that's, uh, that's my talk on food. I might do a devoted video to it eventually. Because there are a lot of people that uh, are into simple living and eating healthy both helps you and simplifies your life. So, win-win, in my opinion. All right, folks. Well, if there's no more questions or comments, then I might uh, check out. Um, I'm writing on Substack, for those of you who care about 
civilization and cre critique of modern society and civilization. Um, we have the Discord. There's a few people on there if you want to chat more. And not sure when I'm going camping, but my horses are coming along. And I'm kind of waiting to get my horses, really. I mean, not, not, not that I'm trying to hurry them, but um, the camping. I've gone out for overnights around here and um, kind of just waiting to get my horses and then go do, assuming I be able to use them. Uh, hopefully they're coming along that well. And there's one, there's a desert trek that I want to do for like four days in May if the weather's good. Probably do it in May if, or if I have the horses. So anyway, that's the latest. That's what's on my mind. Um, thanks for joining, guys. And, <laughs> uh, yeah, whiskey is the cure-all. Just it. Uh, you still have that nice Wade saddle, or did you end up selling it? I sold it. That was a beautiful saddle. I sold it, and then I was supposed to buy a historical saddle with the money so that I wouldn't just be depriving myself of the saddle. And then I couldn't find one. The prices had gone up, way up, understandably so. I mean, saddle making, there's not a ton of money in it to begin with. And then when their supplies go up. So I didn't get a saddle, spent the money, and then recently I bought that other saddle that I quite like, and it seems to fit my horse really well. So... It all ended up working in the end, and I spent like 125 for it. So, uh, life's good. Life is good. Things are good. Uh, it's a sunny day after being kind of cloudy for the last few days, so I'm excited for that, and I'm feeling better. All right, folks. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Remember, life's a lot more fun over on the wild side.